Hello and welcome to another edition of our short clip video series. My name is Ole Carstensen and in the following video I'll demonstrate the calculation of glass transition temperatures from ReXFF simulations. Before we jump in, let me note that this video is part of a series on polymer simulations and while I might reference the previous videos here and there, having seen them is not required to understand the simulation. However, if you're wondering where the polymer model in this video comes from, you should have a look. You can find all previous polymer videos on our YouTube channel or in the video description below. The glass transition is the reversible and gradual transition of an amorphous material from a hard and brittle glassy state into a wobblish or rubbery state. The corresponding temperature range at which this transition occurs is called the glass transition temperature, abbreviated as TG. Typically the transition occurs over a range of temperatures, all of which are characterized by the glass transition temperature. To extract the glass transition temperature from a molecular dynamic simulation, the temperature of the simulation is increased or lowered in steps. On the plateaus of this temperature profile, the thermo and barostat of the simulation are allowed to equilibrate before the density of the system is calculated. Once this is done, the temperature is ramped up or down to the next plateau. The resulting temperature density profiles can then be used to extract the glass transition temperature. The following demonstration is based on the online tutorial available on our website, which itself is based on the following publication. I put a link to both in the video description. We begin by importing a polymer structure into a new AMPS input window. Click on File, Import Coordinates and select the file DETDA-epoxy. This polymer structure was created with a bond boost method as explained in video number one of our polymer video series. Let's enter the details for the ReXFF calculation next. First, switch the engine from band to ReXFF. Then select the force field called CHON2017 underscore weak. This is the force field that was also used in the tutorial and in the publication that I showed earlier. Then enter the details for the molecular dynamics calculation by clicking on the arrow button right next to the molecular dynamics entry. Enter 970,000 as the number of steps. Then click on the details button next to the entry Barostat. Select the Behrensen Barostat with a pressure of one atmosphere and a damping constant of 500 femtoseconds. Going back to the MD main options by clicking on the arrow button we are changing the sample frequency, that's the frame rate at which uh, the molecular structure is saved during the dynamics calculation to 5000. This will not only speed up the calculation, but it will also help reducing the size of the trajectory on disk. To set up the temperature profile I mentioned in the introduction, click on the details button next to the thermostat entry. Click on the plus button to create a thermostat. We select again a Behrensen thermostat and a damping constant of 100 femtoseconds this time. We want to request the following temperature program. First we sample 10,000 steps of room temperature MD. Then we heat up the system by 25 Kelvin over the course of 30,000 steps. We sample another 10,000 steps at the new temperature before heating up another 25 Kelvin, again over the course of 30,000 steps and so on and so forth until we have reached a temperature of 598.15 Kelvin at which we reverse the process. The temperatures and durations at which we sample have to be entered into the field's temperatures and durations and since this becomes a long list, we simply copy them from the online tutorial where they are provided. So I will just uh, open the website 
with the tutorial. I put a link also in the video description and to scroll down to the temperature and durations field. And then I just copy the lists from there. So we start with the temperatures, just select them all, press Ctrl C to copy them and copy them into the temperature field. And then do the same thing also for the durations. Select them all, copy them and paste them into the durations field. Now all that is left to do is save and run the calculation. You just go to file, save as, and call it a glass transition temperature or whatever you like. And once the file has been saved, we can execute the calculation by going to file, run. So now the calculation has started. With over 8,000 atoms and 970,000 steps, this calculation is computationally demanding. On a normal desktop computer, it will take several days, depending on your hardware. On a compute node where AMPs can be run in parallel, it finishes much faster, typically within half a day, but again, this depends on your hardware. Once the calculation is finished, we can open the trajectory in AMPs movie and display properties such as the temperature or the cell volume. The temperature profile looks a bit more steep here than in the cartoon I showed earlier, simply because of the frame rate. We are only saving the geometry every 5000 steps. The density profiles can be calculated with the help of a Python script. The script is available in the video description. Simply download and place it in the directory in which your .results folder is located. To execute the Python script, simply go to the help menu in AMS Movie and select the entry command line. This will open a pre-configured AMS command line from which you can execute the Python script. When called from AMS Movie, it will automatically open in the correct directory. To execute the Python script, simply type in bash that will bring us to a Unix-like shell environment. $amspin slash plums densities.py minus v results dir equals and then the name of your results directory. In my case, the results directory was called glass trans temp dot results. So the same name as my initial calculation with the ending dot results and hit enter. Once the calculation has finished, the results are printed to the command line. In the first column, you will find the temperature and in the second column, you will find the densities. The remaining columns are the three lattice vectors as they change during the course of the simulation. This profile can now be plotted and analyzed with your favorite plotting software. I have used the freely available OpenOffice spreadsheet tools for the following analysis. First, I plot the density over the temperature, then I carry out two linear fits to determine the glass transition temperature as their intersection. The two subsets of fitting points are chosen such that maximal coefficients of determination or R-square values are obtained. As you can see, in this case, the glass transition temperature fits nicely with the experimental data. With its final result, this video demonstration now comes to an end. I hope you liked what you saw, and if you did, take a look at our YouTube channel or subscribe, or leave a comment below the video.